Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you are all doing well. Today I am up and filming nice and early again before I head off to work because today's video is going to be another foundation wear test. And today I'm actually going to be putting two foundations up against each other to see which one is going to last me the longest on my oily, acne prone skin and whether or not they will survive under a mask. I recently reviewed the MUA Pro Base stick foundation on my channel. I will link that video if you guys are interested. But let me tell you, things just did not not go well at all. It was a disaster. It really, really was. And in that video, I told you that I would be experimenting with different primers, different powders, see if I could really, really get it to last on my skin. But rather than just show you what I've been doing with the stick foundation, I thought I would actually do a side-by-side -side comparison with the liquid version of the foundation. So we're going to see how they both go on, which products I use with each one that works better for my skin type, and how they both actually last under a mask. Let's jump straight in. Alright guys, so I have got all my skincare done already. I will have everything that I've used listed and linked down below if you guys are interested. I've had it on for maybe like an hour at this point, so I really let it sit, penetrate the skin. It's not going to interfere with anything. Although I will just say that my sunscreen started pilling. I don't know if it wasn't mixing well with the moisturizer I had underneath or something, so I had to try and remove some of it. I think we're good now. So I have got both foundations in the shade 102, which has neutral undertones. I wasn't actually able to compare the foundation shades to see if they match in my original review because at the time I had the Pro Base foundation in the shade 110 which is for warm undertones. They do also make a pressed powder in the foundation range. Again, this is shade 110. I did want to pick up 102 to see if it matched but they don't actually make the powder in that shade so that made things a little bit easier. So I'm going to do the stick foundation on this side of the face and I'll do the liquid foundation on this side. The reason for that is that I have a lot more texture going on on this side. If you already watched my review, you will know that I had a lot of issues with the way that the stick foundation sat on top of texture. Texture. I'm going to tell you right now, I know it's not going to work on that texture. I'd rather just do it on this side and see what we can do with it. So I'm going to start off with primer first, which I didn't actually use in my original review because I did just want to see what the foundation could do by itself. And I've done a lot of experimenting, a lot of trying to find what works. And I'm going to be pairing two primers. The first one is the Smashbox Oil and Shine Control Primer. Normally, this is a primer that I only use in the areas where I get oily. However, the foundation is just so creamy that I prefer to use this all over the face to try and not give us a drier base, but I guess kind of. <laughs> like, just to reduce the overall oiliness and the overall creaminess of the foundation. I don't know if that makes sense. Then over the top of that, I'm gonna take a second primer, and this is also from the MUA Pro Base range. This is the Smooth Set and Prime Blur Stick, and that's gonna go over the areas that need filling in. In my review, the foundation really struggled on top of any lines, and things like that, it really, really settled. So I found that using a primer like this one that's gonna fill things in really does help. So that is mainly my forehead. I'm gonna try and get in here as well around my eyebrow. And then my smile line was another place where it really, really did sit. So I've been finding that this does help. So now for the liquid foundation side, because this is a mattifying foundation and it is a little bit on the thicker side, I like to use something that is gonna be way more hydrating. I don't want anything drying underneath because that's just not gonna make it look good. So I'm actually gonna take the e.l.f. Mint Melt Cooling Primer. I think this one is designed to be like a gripping primer. Do I find that it really grips my foundation and helps it last longer? I don't think so. Again, I have a review of this product, so I will link that for you guys. For me, this is a hydrating primer, and I think it does give my skin a little bit more of a glow. So actually, to use under this type of foundation, it is absolutely perfect. This side is looking really mattified and then this side just has a lot more of a glow. So let's go into the foundation next and I'm going to do this side first again. So I just want to show you how creamy this is. If you've seen my review you'll remember that it actually broke off. I cannot apply it from the stick. The stick moves around in the tube. What I find the best thing to do is to take a flat foundation brush. This is a PC01 from Peaches and Cream and I just lift some of the product from here. I really don't go in with much. I think one of the problems that I probably had in my original review was just using way too much product because it was so thick, because some of it broke off. Using less product will also help with things like settling into fine lines, for example. So once I've got enough product on, I then take a sponge. This one is the microfiber sponge by Beauty Bay. And I just blend that out. 
So you can see it's just got a nice thin layer of product, which I really would just recommend with such a thick foundation. Whatever type of skin texture you have, I think it's just gonna be a lot better and cause you a lot less issues. We definitely really don't have a lot covered up though. Their website says that this is a full coverage foundation. I think it kind of looks okay on camera, you're not seeing that much, but I just have a lot showing through in real life. So I'm just gonna take a bit more. Again, really going in lightly. I'm building it up very slowly. I'm gonna bring it down into my neck as well and then blend it out. I'm just really trying to avoid having excess product on the face. I'm just gonna add a little bit more over here. I haven't quite got enough product. And then blend out with the sponge. I really do think the sponge is the best way to blend this out. I did not like using the applicator that comes on this side. Okay, so moving back into the liquid foundation now. So let's open this up. Now this particular foundation doesn't come with a pump, it actually comes with a spatula on this end. I'm not gonna use this directly on my face though. I have a clean, it doesn't look clean, but this is a clean microfiber sponge from Beauty Bay. I'm just gonna deposit some of the foundation on here. And let's see, I'm gonna blend it out. Now on the MUO website, it said that the stick foundation might apply darker. I mean, I don't see it looking darker. I'd say that the color matches pretty well. Gonna take some more. Now again, this one is sold as a full coverage foundation. I mean, my acne is really bad, to be fair, but you can see there's still a lot coming through. We are definitely gonna need concealer. It's definitely not the fullest of coverages. I mean, the colour matches pretty well across both foundations, I'd say. It's pretty identical, isn't it? I'm gonna take a tiny bit more just for my forehead up here. I think what's quite nice about this foundation is you can adapt it as well, depending on your skin type. If you have a dry skin type, for example, you can use an oil primer underneath, and that will really help with the thickness and the dryness of it. You know what, I am gonna turn autofocus off again because it's just a nightmare. I don't know if it's the autofocus is just really bad on my camera or if I move around too much. It's just never in focus and it really annoys me. Okay, so looking at this right now, I would say that you can't really tell a difference between either side. They, they kind of look the same. The colour definitely matches. I'm not noticing a difference between either side, but we'll see if they oxidise or anything. I definitely need some extra concealer on both sides, so I'm going to do that next. And I'm just going to take my Conceal and Define Infinite in the shade C3. I'm just going to pop it on the back of my hand like that. And then I just take a concealer brush and I'm gonna pop it on. I know for a fact that this is maskne because it is on my cheeks and not my forehead and it's finally healing up but I'm also pretty sure I have some hormonal acne due in the next few days. Oh, it's just gonna get worse again. And again I'm just gonna use my two different sponges to blend that out so starting off on this side. And then switching over. And then I'm also gonna do my highlighting and my under eyes. And for that, I'm just gonna use my Jouer Concealer. This is the shade Snow. I haven't been experimenting very much with the concealer side of things. It seems to blend fine into both foundations. It is actually light enough to highlight. I'm gonna move straight into powdering and I'm gonna do the under eyes first. Same on both sides, just the Revolution Eye Bright Setting Powder. I did actually try using this particular powder over areas where I was having issues. So I did try powdering like my nose with it, smile lines, all those kind of things. And that was not a good idea. It did not look good. 
So when I did my review, I just powdered using my MAC Mineralize Skin Finish, which is what I'm gonna do on the liquid foundation side, but that did not work with the stick foundation. So I've been doing a little bit of experimenting, I've been using different powders, and I'm gonna take my RCMA No Color Powder today. Now this is not the original packaging, this is an old loose powder tub that I've just emptied the powder into because it's just easier. I'm gonna use the back of my sponge, and this is not something that I've done in a very, very long time. I'm gonna powder those difficult areas, I guess. Even though I have oily skin, I don't tend to powder with loose powder anymore. I haven't done it in a very long time. And that is because I do have very textured skin. I don't like wearing a ton of powder. This was my last resort with this foundation. It was the step that I found made a biggest difference. I did also try powdering the primer to see if that would help in any way. It didn't, I thought it made things look terrible. And then once I've done those areas, I'm just going to take some more on a brush and finish powdering all of that, make sure I'm getting rid of any excess. Using way too much, but it kind of needs it. It does kind of need it, this foundation. And then on the other side, I'm just going to take my MAC Mineralized Skin Finish and I'm using the shade Light. Where this foundation does have a pretty thick consistency, I don't want that heavy powdering because it is going to look really textured and really dry. So that's why I do really like my MAC Mineralized Skin Finish because it really avoids getting that effect. And now that we've done the powdering, I just wanna go in with some setting spray to just soften everything up, get rid of that powdery look. I don't use anything that says it's gonna extend the wear of the foundation. I just go for the I Heart Revolution Vanilla and Coconut Fixing Spray because all it's gonna do is just get rid of that very powdery effect. Okay, so let me zoom you guys in and we'll take a closer look at that. I'm also gonna darken it, it's a little bit light, you probably can't see much. I will say at this stage, they don't look that different. Like I'm not seeing massive differences. I feel like if I look at my forehead, the left side of my forehead actually looks more textured, but I feel like that makes sense because I do have that smoothing primer on this side. Looking at my cheeks, I'm not noticing any major differences. I mean, this side definitely looks more crusty because I have a crusty spot here, but kind of immediately, they look the same. So I feel like the adjustments that I've made with this foundation have worked to get it to the finish that they say it's gonna be, because they do say it's a matte finish foundation and I don't think that's the case. So yeah, right now, can't really see a difference. So right now, as I finish the foundation, it is currently 8.30. I'm just gonna go and finish all the rest of my makeup off camera, and then we'll come back and see how both sides look. All right, guys, so it is now just about 20 past nine. Because I have work, I've gone for a very wearable, really simple liner look. Yeah, I just really fancied a really bold graphic liner today, so here we are. Everything I've used is listed down below in case you guys are interested. So I've just done blush, bronzer, contour, all of that. I also did some fake freckles, but but I don't really like how they've come out today. They're really, really obviously fake. Not that they ever look real. And then I just finished everything off with some more setting spray. I don't know what happened as I was putting on the blush and the bronzer, but things started going really patchy over here. Like it was sticking in all the wrong places. I don't know if that was me. Sorry, my lashes are gluing my eyes shut. I don't know if that was me putting too much product on or something, but I had like loads of product gathering around here with the bronzer. And then I got a patch of the blush here, which I just wasn't getting on this side. It's not something that I've noticed before today so I don't know that was really weird but like I say that might have just been me so let me zoom you guys all the way in again I mean looking at this I do feel like there is something that's not sitting quite as nicely on this cheek particularly around this area I don't know there's something that doesn't look quite right and I <laughs> rise quite right and I feel like things just look a little bit nicer on this side and then I do have some settling up here I definitely have less of it on this side I mean the wrinkles that I have on more pronounced on this side anyway, but the pore filling primer that I've used would really help with that. So yeah, not looking super, super different, but I would say that there is something not looking quite right on this side. So I'm just gonna go about my day now. I'm gonna go and get dressed for work. I'm leaving in about an hour. I am gonna be cycling to work again, so I'm gonna be using that headband that I used last time, so we'll see how it compares on either side, how it lasts. And then in terms of the mask that I'm gonna wear to work, I don't know if I'm gonna wear the silk one that I wore last time. I don't know if maybe that affected 
collected things. I'll show it to you guys when I come back for the next check-in. So yeah, I'm just gonna head to work. I'll be there for three hours. I'll come home and I'll check in with you guys and we'll see how things compare on either side. All right guys, it is now 20 to three. I have literally just made it home. I'm still in my hoodie. I'm actually really, really hot because it's quite sunny out there. I came to film this as soon as I got home and Milton has followed me upstairs and he really, really wants attention. So I'm gonna make this really, really quick. So I think the best thing to do is just to zoom you guys in and we'll see exactly what this is looking like. All right, I've just darkened it a little bit for you guys so we can see a bit better what it looks like. As always, we've got glasses marks. There's nothing I can do about that. We've also got one here. I kept having to push my glasses and my mask up. I'll show you the mask I had on. It was one of these, they're like synthetic and it was really, really fogging up my glasses. So I kept having to like pinch my nose and move the mask up and as you can see, it just hasn't held on. Other than that, at the top, it's not looking great on the forehead. I don't know why I said the top, I mean the forehead. You can see where my helmet has rubbed things off, particularly on this side. I think it just digs in a bit more on this side. I forgot to put my headband on, so I just had the helmet on there directly. I mean, it's looking pretty even. It's been what, like six hours? Yeah, about six hours, isn't it, that it's been done. And I mean, it has rubbed off on both sides, which is inevitable with a mask. You can just see around the jawline, I haven't got that much left on either side. The settling in the smile lines is pretty equal. I do feel like... Things look a little bit better on this side, and by a little bit, I mean like it, literally a fraction. There's just something that's sitting ever so slightly nicer on this side, ever so slightly, and I'm looking particularly at the area where I've got my highlight on. I feel like on this side, I've got oils that have come through. Nothing surprising there, normal for six hour wear. Whereas I look at this side, I don't know, it doesn't just look oily, it looks like it's rubbed off a bit more around here. So I would say that it has rubbed off a little bit more on this side. There's not as much different as I would have expected. They're holding up pretty well against each other, I would say. And then my chin is just completely rubbed off. But yeah, I mean, things are looking pretty even so far. So I'm just gonna go about my day now. I've got loads to do. I've got loads of cleaning to do. Milton's just over there slurping and he's really, really loud. I will check in with you guys later on this evening and we'll see if there is any sort of visible difference between the two. All right, guys, it is now just gone eight o'clock. So I have now had this on for 11 hours so it has been a while and I mean it's a it's a mess <laughs> it's just a mess let me zoom you in let's see if there are any differences between either side all right I mean both sides are pretty bad I don't feel like we've necessarily had more breakdown than earlier my forehead is looking particularly bad you can see that I've had a lot of settling in the lines I feel like it's pretty equal on either side the text Texture is not looking good. I feel like the helmet there is probably to blame and I've not really got anything left on the side of my face. I mean, my nose, <laughs> there's literally nothing left on my nose. I am looking forward to not having to wear masks anymore because it is making these foundation wear tests pretty much impossible. I mean, so much of it has rubbed off. If I had to say whether one of them has lasted better than the other or not, there isn't a visible difference when you just look at this, but I would say that this one has maybe held up slightly better and I mean it's a fraction of a difference I just look closely at it and I feel like this has definitely disintegrated a lot more this one there's something about it that still looks slightly smoother but it is ever so slightly there is also slightly more texture on this side of the face so possibly that's what's affecting that even though they both look terrible at this point I feel like something has just worked a little bit better for me all right so let's have a chat about my final thoughts and what this all means about the two foundations I think that going into this I expected a much bigger difference between the two sides. I'm actually quite surprised at how similar they look at this point. And I think if I'd have done the comparison using the stick foundation in the way that I used it in my review, so my usual powder, no primers, I think we'd be seeing a lot more of a difference. Like I think most of this would be gone at this point, but I have been experimenting with it. We've used some primers there. I've used a lot more powder today and it does hold up. It does actually hold up against the liquid foundation. So I would say that that has really taken me by surprise. Now, for my skin type, oily skin, acne, texture, I would go for the liquid one over the cream one. I just find it a lot easier to use. I can use one primer, I can use a thin layer of powder, and that's it. Whereas the stick foundation is just a lot more work. I have to use two primers, I have to use so much powder. The fact that I can't use it 
from the stick as well is a little bit annoying. I feel like the whole point of a stick foundation is the fact that it's quite convenient. You can just literally paint it on, blend it out. And I can't do that. It's just too creamy. I have to get a brush out. Again, it's just more effort than it's worth. I just have a much easier experience with this. So if you have oily skin, I would direct you more towards the liquid version. I do think it's just a better experience overall. I just wouldn't recommend the stick foundation if you have oily skin. I think it's going to be a lot better suited to your normal to dry skin types, provided you don't have any texture. I think if you have texture of any kind, I would stay away from it. And for me, the key to this product is using it very sparingly. Don't put too much on. Go slowly, layer it up. I think you will have a much better experience. If you enjoyed this video, then do as always, please make sure you give it a big thumbs up. Leave me a comment and let me know what you thought of it. And if you haven't already, then do please hit the subscribe button as well as the notification bell so that you don't miss out on any of my future videos. And I'll see you all on the next one. Bye guys.